Hello there dear guests, my name is Manda Panda and welcome back to Amnesia. Uh, where we last left off, we ran away from a terrifying water monster and now we are here in the back hall with our lovely little friends here. And water splashies. Um, so now we, I don't remember what we're doing now, um, this door opened. I don't think we have to go there yet. Um, let me go look over here. I don't remember where we have to go. I don't think we have to go down here. Um, let's see, where is this? This is the storage. We don't have to go there yet. Um, let me see what's over on this other side. Because, okay, that's, I think that's the elevator? Okay, I think we have to get that elevator working. Yes. Oh. You have an ascending room. Will it take us to the inner sanctum? It will definitely take care of the vertical part of our journey. So, you have ridden an elevator before? Yes, the Colosseum at Regent's Park has one. It takes you to the gallery where you can view the panorama. Good. This ride might be a little longer. And in the other direction. Cool. I mean, just, just imagine, like, living in a world without something as valued as elevators and escalators. I mean, not that I mind going up and down stairs, it's just, you know... It's nice when you're in some place that has, you know, 13 stories and you don't want to climb all those stairs. You know, it's, it's convenient, it's nice. Um, also, Daniel is a small bean and must be protected at all costs. But he, he isn't, and that's very sad. <laughs> um, okay, so I let's go up to these rooms up here. Yes, these are okay. Study. Don't want to go there yet. There is a guest room right here. Yes. He returned to the teak. He returned the. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. He returned the teacup to the saucer and picked up the orb as one would as one would an apple and pondered the strange happenings. On the strange happenings. Words are hard, I apologize. Okay. Um My journal is gone. What would they want with my journal? They're gonna read all your secrets. Chair. Um so yeah, I think this this was Daniel's room, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, because I think we see... <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. We see Alexander's room later on. Um, wow. You got, you got some cleaning to do, sir. You are not organized at all. Wait. That one. Oh, wait, that's a laudanum. Daniel kept illegal drugs in his room. That's a headcanon. I I accept it with all my heart. Ah, there we go. Second of July, eighteen thirty-nine. I received a letter today from the Algerian governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. So it's basically like the Roanoke colony. That's cool. <coughs> okay. This is important, and I'm not gonna smash it because then things will come. Uh, let's go in here. Hey, look, blood. That's nice. Or wine. No one can really tell. Tinderbox. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, let's see. More shirts. And no pants. Nice. Ugh. So much anger. Oh, there's another box. There's another drawer. Nothing down there. Okay. Like a book? It's something in German. 
or Latin. I don't know. And now it's gone forever in the void. Okay. Daniel. What? Still having nightmares, I see. Yes. I can't shake them. They come every night. We'll put a stop to them. You'll see. You poor child. So many sad, sad dreams, sad times. 3rd of July, 1839. Today I picked up Herbert's things at the customs house. I dug through the trove of documents he had carried and found a log detailing the expedition. The nature of this text ranged from quick notes to colorful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, Herbert dryly states, we covered Daniel after one hour of entrapment. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion, but suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? It's illegal drugs from Africa. Or it's the Hope Diamond, you know, no one ever knows. It's 1839, no one knew anything in that time frame. Like a box. It's a crowbar, what is this? Half-Life? <laughs> I couldn't remember the name for a second. Um, okay, uh, is, I think there's something behind... No, there's not. I'm trying to be smart and remember things, but I am not. Hey, it's a friend. Hello, friend. Go die in a fire, please. Hey, I have a thing that can fix that. I, okay, that's fine. The key. Please, let it be here. Okay, yeah, this is where the... There it is. Oh. Thank God, there it is. I guess it is a good place to hide it, then. Yes, no one would ever see the picture that is almost not straight. 4th of July, 1839. It's done! The orb is assembled. I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare. Shaking and sweating, I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea. The relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them, but somehow I knew how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no adhesive. The ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been molded by a factory. This is all too strange. Well, this is, this, I mean, this is about to be the turn of the, the, not the turn of the century, the turn of a new decade. I mean, a bunch of weird stuff was happening. No one knew what to do. Also, if, um, if the pieces formed by themselves together, that means that Daniel really didn't do anything. He says that he knew what he was doing, but, you know, he really didn't. Hello, friend. I mean, that kind of just happened. Friend, hello, sir. Okay, bye, sir. Bye. Get out of my life. Okay. The strange letter frightened him, but it was also the one which offered some comfort. Just like all texts from your best friend. They're just weird, man. But you can't help loving them. 
Okay, hey, look, a torso. Nice. That's how the lovers in 1839 did it. They just offered body parts to each other. That's so romantic. Go. Beautiful. Okay. Um, now let's go... Go where? Um, do you want to go to the study? Um, sure, why not? Let's do that. He flipped through the Book of Monarchs looking for etchings and counted. Nine different kings from all over Europe had been depicted with an orb resting in their hands. Yay, ancient relics that are probably cursed. That's always a good thing, especially when they come from another country that no one really knew about because it was in the 18th or the 19th century. And again, no one knew about anything. Okay. Um, let's go in here. Hello, science. Tindy, come here. I need you. There you go. That funnel is glitching out. I mean, honestly, that's such a mood, honestly. Oh, I can't even move it. Because it's so glitchy. Um, I love this game. Have you guys noticed? It's really good. Uh, let's see. Hey, look, another Stefano. <laughs> Old memes, yay. Can I, can I take this? I want it. There we go. Okay. Well, wait. Nothing, okay. Wait, how many tenders do I have? I have 14. Okay. Um... Them legs, though. I like that painting. Um, oh, a thing. Letter regarding the discovery of an, an orb. To my most trusted student and friend, Johann Weyer. Uh, the most remarkable thing happened as I was traveling through the Prussian woods this summer. I finally found one of the orbs that I have been looking for for the past 20 odd years. It is, a, it is as explic inexplicable as the... Helidromus described it in the Hortus Conclusius. Conclusius. Yeah, that. It was as it was told about. It was as it was told about in an underground Mithraic temple crowned with an unearthly artifact. The orb was big enough to fit my cupped hands, and the texture was smooth and jagged. Its color washed. Its color washed while rich. I don't think that's a sentence. I don't know what that means. Contrast, it is not enough to describe its nature. It was an impossibility, an artificial paradox captured within stone. I was staying in a nearby village called Aldstadt, investigating one of the antique, antiquated trails when I found the cavern. I went inside and studied where I could verify the truth of these enigmatic artifacts. They were real. As you can understand, this is the most important discovery of my life. But it has also become of great my greatest fear. As I entered the underground chamber, I could feel that I was trespassing. Because of my curiosity, I did my best to fight these instincts and fetch the orb from its place. I scrambled out the chamber and into the woods. I could sense something was following me. It bayed loudly as it closed in. The beast, this guardian of the orb, was relentless in its pursuit. I made my way to a nearby ravine where I stumbled upon some men fishing in the lake. I tried to warn them as I passed, but fortunately they remained as I continued my escape. When I heard the cry of pain echo through the valley, I felt such a tremendous sense of relief, I think I would be spared. Suddenly a blue shimmering light engulfed me and the colors of the forest were washed away before my eyes. I kept running through the bleak surroundings. The trees had turned charcoal black with leaves of cinder, the ground covering, covered in murky water. I pressed on through the den. The drenched land as a glowing ember wave. <sighs> I apologize. I pressed on through the drenched land as a growing ember gave way to the rising wind and rained on me. Okay. I could hear pleading screams in the distance and I joined in as pain and fear overtook me. I fell to the ground gasping for air. This certainly must sound strange, but I had once been carried miles away into the Alps to a grassy field outside Genoa. The Guardian had taken the orb from me, but I, but still, until this day, I fear its return. 
Sometimes I lay awake at night listening for the hollow, howling cry I heard in the forest. It had been... It has been nearly a decade since that day, and I still haven't been able to write about the incident. The last time we spoke, you told me about your interest in ongoing research into the mythic orbs, and I realized I owed you the truth about my visit to Aldstadt. Your friend and mentor, Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. That was a lot to read. Wow. I hope you all enjoyed that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, so now where? Let's go this way. Um, oh yes, I remember this room, or this, this area, fondly, yes. Uh, no, I don't need that. There we go, find another way, okay. Into the study, okay. Hey, look, it caved in, what a surprise, I have to find another way around. And it's the room I hate. Yep. Mm hmm. Let's see what you have to offer. Ah, what a mess. I should have sharpened the saw. But I can sense it. It's definitely there. Gross. Yes, a more sharpened saw was definitely your first problem with that. Um. But yeah, I, I hate this room so much. Canis Lupus Familiaris, 1658, April 12th, Animal Experiment. After a short study, it is clear that the agitation found among humans can be found in the dog. Fear and pain induce stress, which seems to trigger an endogenous, endogenous response, causing the animal to burst with energy. I believe that the catalyst is produced in the brain. It is difficult to determine exactly where and what it is, but I can sense it. It reeks of cosmic genesis. There is an inherent problem in harvesting this energy since the creature is bound to die from the exercise. I must refine this process of torture to enable any real work to be done. More experiments must be performed, but it seems that only human beings are able to produce the amount necessary. It might be the ability to appreciate the severity of the process that the ultimately augments their experience of terror. Yeah, this is uh, the part of the game where it starts getting way more dark. Uh, so yeah, um, if you don't want to see like how much more darker this game gets, then please leave, because it's not going to get any better. Um, hey look, it's a tiny little bean. You're beautiful. Don't let society tell you you aren't. Um, desk. More tenders. Hey look. He's beautiful. Mr. Alexander. <coughs> nice perspective. Honestly, but that's like a really, like, this portrait is so pretty. They, um, the creators made one for Daniel as well, but it's a full body shot, and I, I love it. It's great. Oh, hello, Bones. That's... We all got skeletons in our closet, or sometimes it's skulls in our desk drawers. Um, wait, there was a thing to read over here. Anatomy Frontiers, 1658, January 9th. Further disappointment. The antiquarian's latest findings yielded nothing. I'm still unable to grasp the interior workings of life and its relation to the power I sense within it. I shall pursue more books on the subject, but I suspect that it will be in vain. Since no research has been made in my particular interest, I must attempt to fulfill the void myself. Clearly humans emanate more of the energy I seek, but I hope animals will suffice as they would provide less of a hassle to acquire. So he was stealing people's dogs or stealing them off the street. That's lovely. Okay. Let's go. Um. Okay. I'm done in here. I don't want to come back ever. No, thank you. Oh. Oh no. 
The trees made a noise. Oh no. Oh, oil. Nice, I need that. Only held together by a weak frame. I think this, I have to break this, and this is how I get over to the study. Um, I don't want to go there quite yet. Uh, let me go make sure there's nothing else I have to, um, I have to do. Professor Taylor was the second death caused by his damned curiosity. Was he a cat? Because, because then the, um, something brought it back. I don't remember, uh, it's the, um, the curiosity, no. Curiosity killed the cat, but the value of life brought it back? I don't remember, it's something like that. I was trying to make a joke. It was supposed to be funny. Please subscribe. Um. Okay, so elevator. This was a machine room over here. I just want to see if I can go in here. It's locked. Okay, I don't need to be. Uh, oh. Why would Daniel keep the key to the machine room? That doesn't make sense. Okay. There we go. He panted heavily, trying his best to keep himself from screaming. The medicine cabinet had been overturned and lay collapsed on the floor. He reached through the broken glass door and grabbed all the sedatives he could find. Machine things. Yay. Okay, actually, um, I think I'm gonna leave this episode here. Maybe? Let me see what I can get through with this. And then we'll see. Okay, I can't turn that. So I think I have to get the, the, um, what is it? The elevator working. I think that's the whole point of this. Um, yes, yeah, so let's keep going down. That's a good idea. Uh, oh, it's a thing. July, 1839. Today, I went to the university looking for answers. I was able to sneak into Herbert's office and pick up an address book along with some relevant textbooks. Professor Taylor at the Faculty of History was very helpful and I managed to approach the subject of the orbs. The most interesting aspect was the prevalent trace they had left in our culture. The mythic orbs may in fact have inspired the Globus Cruciger which so many royal regalia holds to this day. In ancient times, the orbs were held by priests as a symbol of the sun and its power. As I was leaving, I overheard a disturbing conversation. Sir William Smith, the geologist, was killed last night. Less than a fortnight had passed since I'd asked for his expertise. I know it's silly, but I can't help feeling responsible somehow. It's not silly, Daniel. All of your anxiety is valid and it's okay. You're a good human being. Okay, so I need, I need cogwheels here. I need three of them. Okay, got it. This is a, what is this? It's an incinerator. It's for bodies. Um. Okay, nothing for the burner to ignite. Um, there's one cogwheel. Maybe? Oh, yes it does. Come here. I need you. I... Eh. Eh. There we go. Cool. That's one of you. So I know all three of these are down here. Um, I don't want to run out of- oh yay lantern! Awesome. Uh, let's see. Ash. So much ash, more tenders. Um, okay, I don't think- okay, yeah, I, I think I lied. There's, I don't think all of them are down here. Um, I mean, there are a bunch of other paths over here. Let's see if they're over there. Door. Let's 
see here. Nothing over here. I keep thinking I can conserve my lamp oil, but, uh... Oh yes, this thing. This thing is also important. I need that later on. Machine equipment memo. Note that there are only two spare rods left in the storage for elevator machinery. Make sure to only discard the ones which are badly damaged to keep the others in the study room in case all three work again. Okay. So for this puzzle, I need to go down to the study, but I'm or not the not the study, the storage. I'm not prepared to go down there quite yet. I need to make sure everything else is finished before I go there. That's not going to damage the pieces at all. It's just you know making it faster for us. Oh, wait. Okay. There we go. Now one more. Um. So I need to find these pieces, or this last piece, and then I have to... Oh, there it is. So I have to finish this, and I think this turns on the, the burner? I'm not quite sure. And I would think so. The burner is right there. Okay, there we go. That's all done. She needs. Oh, well, I tried. Okay, I tried. That's all I can do. That's all you get. Um. Oh wait, I need coal in here. We gonna make some diamonds. Burning more coal. You're such a little white child. <laughs> You're so privileged. I'm sorry. That was mean. <laughs> Just be happy with what you have. Oh my gosh. <laughs> gonna close that. Did it close? Yes it did. Okay. Can I turn it on now? Ah, more work. What else do I have to do? Oh, I have to go turn on this thing in here. Or not, not in here, down over there. Also, are you telling me this thing is gonna run for like five hours until I finish everything in here? Yeah, sure. I mean, unless the coal back in 1839 was way better than how it is now. Um. So that's where I came from. Okay, I gotta go down here. I look blueprints and stuff. Nice. 14th of July, 1839. I've read every book I can find on the subject. While rich in legend and hearsay, my knowledge is lack for the insight I crave. I've sent letters to many in Herbert's address book and received answers of varying importance. Today, I got one which differed greatly from the others. From a baron in Prussia. He said nothing about the quaint stories of priests in underground temples. He didn't even mention them. He simply wrote, I know. I can protect you. Come to Brennenburg Castle. Signed, Alexander. What am I to make of this? Protect me from what? Is someone after me? I looked up Brennenburg and traced it to the Prussian woods near the Baltic Sea. While being the least informative letter I've received, <laughs> it causes me greatest distress and interest. As I write, my thoughts are drawn to my nightmares in which a most disturbing sound calls to me. A sound defying description. A voice from the void. The last few weeks have been awful with so many sleepless nights dreading a repeat of those horrid dreams. Tomorrow, I shall visit my physician, Dr. Tate, in hope that he can provide me with sedatives to help me sleep. Sad boy. But always take your medicine, it's very important. I'll look at another tender box. Oh, there's another one. So I forgot that Daniel did not get in touch with Alexander first. Also, that sounds like some people in a 
my college classes very uninformed and slightly distressing comments and letters. <laughs> Pressure valves. Can I have... there we go. Up. Up. Down. That did nothing. Okay. Can I pull it down? There we go. Oh. Okay. Cool, I did it. That was easier than I thought it would be. Nothing else at the end of the hallway? No, there's not. Boxes, are you hiding anything? No? Okay. I guess we can go turn the machine on now. Running, running, running. And ducking. And more running. Oh no, we still have to, yeah, we still have to do that. Okay, so we still probably have to go to the storage and find those little thingies that we need. Let me just make sure it's not doing anything. Okay, it's still burning. Yeah, it's, it's not done yet. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> let me go to the, back to the study. And then we will go to the storage. Where is the outer door? There it is. No, it's not. Okay, there we go. Sir William Smith. Sir William Smith had been marked. There was no way for him to know that such a young man from the other day could cast such a terrible shadow. Okay, so let's go to, um, wait, what's over here? So the elevator is back there. Down here is the, okay, that's storage down there. And then up there is the study. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode here because we have a lot to get to in the next few times we meet. <laughs> um, I hope you're all still enjoying this series because I am greatly. Uh, I love you all and I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye.